Every now and again, someone releases a mod that leaves me screaming, Yes! I need that! I need that! So very, very badly. And this week I have such a mod for you. What is that mod? Well, let's find out. Welcome to part 16 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. Okay, this is quite simply the best mod idea for Fallout 4 that has ever come up. It is Personal Pack Brahman. It's not hugely fast, I can tell you that, but it will follow me. And yes, I can load my stuff into this thing and have it carry it for me. So if I go along and go open inventory, I'm going to give it some weapons and a couple of outfits. Okay. It is now carrying some of my equipment, which is great in of itself. It, this allows me to carry a lot of goods. And yes, I can actually have my follower with the Brahmin. The Brahmin is not a follower exactly. So I can have any follower and I can still have the pack Brahmin. The pack Brahmin I can load with quite a lot of stuff depending on how I set it up. And it will follow me around. It will not fight for me. It will not, I cannot ride it into battle or anything else. It just follows me carrying my junk. Scavengers listening to that will just, you'll all be hearing the Alleluia song right now. I mean, you don't need anything more from this than it carries all of your crap. But there is in fact more. Watch this. I can go along, command it. I can get it to follow, wait here. I can go and tell it to wait at a settlement. Or I can tell it to offload all of the junk. I'm gonna tell it the red rocket truck stop. And the Brahman will run off to the set. I say run off. It will slowly plod off to the settlement and return the junk. And then, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, it will then set out to find me and rejoin me. And will once more be completely empty. And I can double check, I can show you, I can actually show you that it has dropped the stuff here. I have now got Righteous Authority, the Scattergun and the Dirty Postman uniform here in the workshop. It delivered it and then it found me again. I can change the equipment my, uh, I should really name them. We need to be able to name them. We need to be able to name them. I can change the equipment on Bessie here. I can pick no top packs, as you can see. I can also pick no base packs. Now, if I go back there, she will now be lighter than before and a lot faster. If I move over here, so we get some distance, she will actually approach me an awful lot faster. She will obviously carry less. She can still actually carry something. I say she, but she's a she. She can still carry something without the packs, believe it or not. We're not going to discuss where she keeps the items any more than we're going to discuss where dog meat or, or indeed the character himself keeps all his items. But she is a little faster. Or I can overload her to the point of stupidity, in which case she can carry far more. I say the point of stupidity, I mean my provisioners are pretty much there already. She can now carry much more, but she will be an awful lot slower. So I may run off and do some fighting, but it may take a while for her to catch up. And don't worry about them getting lost. You can actually track them on your map. There is a miscellaneous quest if you want. You can toggle it on and then track all of your Brahmin. Oh, did I say all of your Brahmin? Yes, I forgot to mention you can actually have more than one. You create or summon Brahmin through the Pack Brahmin Manager, which is a trough shaped object that you get in the miscellaneous section of your settlement menu. And you just, once you've built it, you click it to use and you can create a new pack Brahmin. There you go, I now have two. In fact, 
I now have three. And I can set them all to be completely different. I can give them completely different packs. I'm just going to give you the light one. And, oh yeah, I have to go back and then exit. So I now have Brahman that can carry different amounts and will travel different speeds. I can also change some of the options. I can make the animals protected, i.e. they can't die. Because yes, believe it or not, by default, your pack Brahman can die, which would be terrible. Yeah, not because of all the junk you'd lose, obviously, because of the poor animal. Um, you can change how long the body will hang around if they die to give you time to go and loot it. You can also change the amount of time you can leave them waiting before they will disappear. There are lots of options, including the auto-enable lamps at night, which is kind of cool. The lamps come on and your Brahman now has pack lights, although not very stealthy. There is also an uninstall slash reset option. It's always nice to see that. This is something you should use if you decide to stop using the mod and you want to uninstall it. You do this first, you click the uninstall option, you save your game, and then you uninstall it from Nexus Mod Manager. So always nice to see clean options like that. This is a phenomenal idea for a mod. It really is. For someone like me who likes to collect lots of junk to rebuild his settlements, this is absolutely superb. I only have two complaints about the mod. The first one is they do seem to be a little slow. It, it's kind of realistic, but they're a lot slower than the Provisioners Brahman. Now, the Provisioners do walk everywhere, whereas you generally will sprint everywhere. So it is, it is reasonable that your Brahman will unfortunately get left behind a little, but I, I think I would like to see it speed up a little more. You can lose them. I think that's the... Is that the... I think that's the provision as Brahman. You see what I'm saying? It moves a lot faster than mine. Um, and I do occasionally lose the Brahman when fast traveling. You can always fix it by sleeping for a couple of hours. The Brahman will catch up and we'll get to you, but obviously that could make them a little less useful. Using the vertebrate is probably going to mean you lose them, leave them behind, and that's all very realistic, but it does make them a little less useful. Of course, it's it's not really going to be easy to take Brahman with us on a uh, vertebrate. My second complaint is so minor, it's not even really a complaint, it's more of an improvement request. When you command the Brahmin, you get a pop-up menu. I think I would rather it had a conversation dialogue, like when you command one of the other followers, like Dogmeat. Um, I think it could be done. I think it could pretty much have the same effect. I do understand probably without the official tools, without the creation kit, it's a lot more difficult to do that. And you should remember that. This mod was created without the official tools. It is amazing that it uh, it works as well as it does considering that. This mod is it's a superb idea. It's very well done and I take my hat off to the mod author for this one. I, I, I don't say this lightly but this may well be my favorite mod so far. It is It is certainly one of the best mod ideas ever for Fallout 4. It's finally here, ladies and gentlemen. That gun has arrived. That's right, the Blade Runner gun has finally made its way to Fallout 4. The iconic gun from that movie is here. And it just begs the question, what the hell were you thinking, Bethesda? Why was this not already in the game. I mean, if anything should ever have been in the game, this weapon is it. The model for this gun is very cool indeed, and the the action is amazing. It really does feel like you're shooting a hand cannon. The textures feel a little low resolution for me, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not something that would stop me from using this weapon. It uses 5.56 ammo, and even in its unmodded state, it is a monster of a weapon. It does a lot of damage, more damage than a 44 by quite a bit, and it can be 
enhanced, it can be modified to do even more damage. It also has a long barrel version and it also allows you to change the grip to a more lightweight one. There is a small issue with the draw animation and the reload sound because he's had to use the 44 reload and uh, draw animation stroke sound and it didn't work with that weapon so he's included some options that allow you to draw the weapon without the standard 44 draw animation of course that does mean the 44 draws pretty much differently as well well it actually draws a lot faster as you can see the reload sound is changed for both weapons so when i reload you'll hear that slight power up wind that you associate when you reload that gun it matches that gun it just doesn't quite match the 44 but I have a feeling if you're using this weapon, you're probably not going to be using the 44. They're both brilliant weapons, but they have a subtly different style. And this one, well, this style definitely suits this game. Now, probably one of the most requested mods for me to either look at or give an opinion on is the Build Your Own Vault mod, which is a settlement building mod that lets you build your own vault. It gives you some options under Special to build a vault entrance, a great big concrete thing, and a door that fits nicely inside there. Now you'll only be able to build these doorways in certain settlements that have a vault somewhere below them. The, the idea is some of these settlements have vaults deep below and you can build an entrance to that vault. And once you're here you just activate it and then you end up in your own little settlement vault. It's pretty much the same as the vault entrance for many vaults. You build the same way as you build in any of your settlements, although I can tell you, you don't seem to share a workshop with the settlement you've built it in, so you may find you don't actually have the components to build an awful lot of things. If you go along to the workbench, you do have circuitry, concrete, copper and steel that seems to come with the mod itself, but you're going to have to bring some components in here. Hopefully there will be a way to set up a supply line or even share a workshop with the parent workshop because you're probably going to need it. However, if you want to start building your vault, the materials you have in the workshop will actually allow you to build quite a lot. This is where the workshop menu is actually different. If you go along to structures, you now have three options, metal, doors, and miscellaneous. And if you go into the metal one, you'll see these strange looking options. They're actually different related pieces. And by that, what I mean is all of these pieces here are related to each other. This one here, all related to each other, and so on. And that is actually going to be important. Now, the simple things for example are here I can make some corridors let's make a corridor or a small a small room you place it you have to place it in a doorway like so and then you will have a room I'll rotate it and do another one there it's not too difficult to get them to snap into place there you have a small room but for example if if i set this small room piece like this and then try to use pieces from a different tile set for example they won't snap it's it's nigh on impossible i found to get them to snap easily i mean may, maybe it will be possible maybe some of them cross over but i found it very difficult to do so so you're going to have to use pieces from the same, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, grouping. And you can change at these doorways. So now I'll go into this one and I'll find a door piece. This looks good. Lock it into place. And now with this one, I can now add a variety of pieces from this tile set. So there's the piece. I've got to make sure I don't fall off. It isn't terminal. 
but uh, it does... Ah, there we go. I'll put another piece there, and maybe a corner piece there. And as you can see, I can sort of build my rooms that way. I could actually have this be in the corner right there. Um, you can also add blank floor pieces with pillars, like so. Although, it, again, it can be difficult to get them to snap into place. You can also make bigger walls. So, like so. So you can actually have very, very tall rooms in this vault, as you can imagine. I'm not going to get a chance to finish any of them, but I'm sure you get the idea. There are plenty of floor pieces if you just want to extend your floor out. But once you've got your room set up, remember the only way you're going to be able to change this particular tile set is if you go via a door piece. So I can attach that piece like that, then I can go to a different tile set and pick a different, oh god, there you go, different door and now I can do something like, let's build some stairs, yeah we got stairs here, up like that and then carry on like so. So as you can see, each room has to sort of belong to one tile set, but you can join different tile sets via the doorways. And as you can imagine, you've got almost unlimited power to make whatever the hell you like until you lose materials, until you run out of materials. You can even see the elevator shaft going up there. There is something kind of surreal about it, but it does give you some idea of the potential. I mean, you really could create fairly impressive vaults. What I would actually like to see is a similar mod to this that would just allow me to make standard basements. Pretty much the same idea. Just build a basement entrance and then build the tile set so that you get the basement you want. Digging into the ground, so to speak. If this can be done with a vault, I'm pretty damn sure it can be done with a basement. This is a great idea, and if the mod author can get it so that you can either link the settlements up so they can share the junk, share resources, um, and if they can get settlers to actually come down here to populate it, it would be incredible. This can only get better when the get comes out. And finally, have you taken some perks you regret taking? Did you take something without realizing what it did, only to be horribly disappointed? Or perhaps you're just very, very bored with your current build? Well, don't worry, there is now a mod that will allow you to reset all of your perks. It allows you to create a perk reset chem, a chemical that will wipe your memory clean and refund you all of the perks, allowing you to basically start over. Um, you create the chemical at the chem bench, as you would with any and all chemicals. It, it requires plastic, so yeah. Uh, maybe that's just for the syringe. Um, God knows what's in it. Either that or you're injecting plastic into yourself. But you then take it and wait a few seconds, and then when you go to your perk menu, you will have, as you can see, I've got 75 perks at this point. It resets not just the perks, but the stats. This includes the bobble head stats. So if you found any bobble heads, you will actually gain the point back for that. This does mean you could technically spend those points that you got from bobble heads on other perks if you so wished, but it does have the downside that the 10 cap is back. So if you had one of your stats at 11 because you took it to 10 and then got the bobblehead, I'm afraid you won't be able to do that again because whilst you still keep your bobbleheads, the bobbleheads will still stay there, the point of intelligence, for example, from the bobblehead intelligence, is now here in this pool. Now don't worry, you don't lose your perks. You don't lose the perks from bobbleheads. If you look at the melee weapons bobblehead perk, you still have it. It is just the points that are spent either on special stats or on the perks. 
But apart from that, I'm pretty much ready to respec my character. And you can do this as often as you like. Now, obviously, this, well, you can come up with some role playing reason as to why it's reasonable, if you so wish. Or you can just say, I don't care. I wish to respec. But you can now do it. It's very, very simple. It's very, very quick. And you can pretty much do it as often as you like. Originally, I was going to cover another mod in this video, a mod called Def UI, which is a user interface overhaul mod. However, I realized that I wanted to show people how to set it up, how to install it, customize it, and so on, and that it probably needed its own video. So I released a new Fallout 4 mod clinic video, and I will leave a link to it here if you want to go and check that mod out. And that is all we have time for this week. I will be ending with some screenshots that you guys have posted yet again. There are now well over a thousand images. They're all absolutely brilliant. And I really do appreciate the time and effort you guys have put in to posting them. If you're interested in posting your own screenshot, I will leave a link down below to a video that shows you exactly how to do that. And let me thank you in advance for doing so. I'll be back next week with more great mods to share with you, and I would love it if you could join me for that video, or indeed any of my other videos. I look forward to seeing you next time, wherever that may be, and until then, remember, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.